Hey everybody, I'm so glad you're with us for this week's episode. We're coming to you from far south Louisiana, and that is the mighty Chafalaya River. It's home to some of the best bass fishing that Cajun country has to offer. We're gonna show you a few details, show you around in case you'd like to make a trip and catch some of your very own. Glad you're with us. It all starts right now. Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air. You're watching the only program with weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. The Chafalaya River is really an amazing place. Now, as you can see, the river is right here in the background. In fact, we're located right now in Morgan City, Louisiana, far southern part of the state. But it's not really so much the river itself behind me that holds the key to all the good fishing. Now, yes, there are some fish in the river, several different species, and there are some bass out there. But on this week's episode, we're gonna take this Tracker Pro Team 195. We're gonna venture out into some of the ditches and canals and estuaries and ponds and lakes that are in the Chafalaya River Basin. It's just a tremendous network of some of the best bass fishing the state of Louisiana has to offer. So we're gonna head on out and do that while we're doing it. We're gonna take you around your local region for this week's fishing reports from our expert team of insider reporters from lakes, rivers, and bays where you live, both fresh and saltwater. They're gonna bring you this week's reports. So we're gonna drive a little bit north and show you a little bit around the Bayou Magzell area and the Bell River area on the other side of the spillway. But then the real key is we're headed down to Bayou Black, which is located out near Amelia, show you some of the unbelievable marsh that's out in that area. So right now we're headed for the boat ramp. Let's get things started with your weekend planner. Hello everyone. The Salooner tables are indicating fair game fish activity for both days of fishing this weekend. Peak morning hours will take place before sunrise and again later in the day at 435 on Saturday and 533 on Sunday. The sun will rise at 619 and set at 837. And we just had a new moon, so evening skies will be mostly void of moonlight. We're coming right back with fishing reports from throughout the area. Plus, I'll return with Chad Ferguson to answer a question about catfishing on this week's Ask the Pro feature. Stay with us. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Lou's. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland. We know bass and crappie from heads to tails. Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan your fishing vacation and catch the details at orangebeach.com slash fishing. And by Glacier Glove. Stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. Made it back out. And there is a largemouth for you, right? There. Got one. What have we got? Little bass. A fighter here. Are you done? He's done. All right, there's a little one for you right there, but it's a fish and it's a beautiful thing, fish in the marsh. Welcome back, everybody. Made it back out. And there is a largemouth for you right there. And a dark gold, beautiful looking bass right there. Let him go back, see you, bud. All right, well, let's uh, get you oriented a little bit to this area. There are hundreds and hundreds and thousands of square miles of water to fish here. But let me kind of get you the general lay of the land. The Chafalaya River kind of bisects right through the middle of this entire basin of water. You've got uh, Magzell Bayou, the Bell River. On the other side of the levee and on the other side of the intercoastal waterway, you've got Bayou Black, which is just a whole network of ditches, drains, small lakes, ponds, just a big wide open marsh. It's kind of where we are right now as we're over in Bayou Black. One of the little keys you want to look for is tidal current. There's not a lot of tide here, but what there is dramatically impacts the fishing here. So you can actually see back in behind there, there's a lake back there and there's a cut that comes out and it drains into this little canal that I'm sitting in. And right at the mouth of that, 
is right where that bass was sitting. We'll talk about water clarity and some other factors a little bit later, but that gets us started. Got a bass right there, and uh, we'll get re-rigged on a little plastic worm. I'll show you all the gear we're using at the end of the show. We'll get back to fishing and see if we can catch it. Hey, most of our Oklahoma lakes are actually in pretty good shape lake level wise and the bass are biting. Now Tommy Biffle says you should be targeting that species in the transition structure area is about six to 10 foot deep. He also had these great tips to share. There's an old bug fish that uh, is pretty good. He is out here pretty deep. I've kind of got a rule of thumb on uh, what weights I use and how deep of water. Um, I like a 7 16 pretty much overall because I'm pretty well fishing shallow water. But uh, I say 7 8 foot, I'll use the 7 16 out to that depth. If it's real calm, maybe go to 10 foot. But 10 foot or deeper, I use a 11 16 And uh, really, it just depends on what kind of bank and what kind of stuff you're fishing. You know, whether you're fishing maybe a little bit of brush or, or just a rock flat or a gravel. I found out that using the 11 16 head, a heavier head in shallow water, get more beating and banging around, more noise, that they like it better. And using that biffle bug and hardhead is exactly what high school team Reese David and Mac Taylor did, shown here with Chris Lindbergh at LaRue, to win the recent FLW Oklahoma State Championship on Fort Gibson Lake. They've qualified to go on to the Nationals at FLW and also BASS. Good luck, guys. Hey, you can catch them in Oklahoma right now, but you can't catch them if you don't go. Got him. What an acrobat. All right, there's another one. We're on to something. Not big, but let me explain a little something to you. This place is not a big fish place. It's a numbers place. You can catch a lot of bass in the Chafalaya River Basin. And a lot of them are gonna be that size right there. Just a lot of fun to catch. But if you're looking for a big trophy bass, this is really not it. If you catch a three to five pound bass here, that's a big one for this place. Most of the bass you catch here are gonna be from 10 inches to two pounds. That's gonna be your average bass here. The reason you come here, it's for the experience. How many places can you go and fish a place that looks like this? I want you to just look, this is one of the bassiest looking places you could ever go. You've got cypress trees and cypress knees. You've got willow trees. You've got backwater lakes. You've got every kind of aquatic vegetation, but not many places you can go that every place you throw looks like it ought to be a bass. What a great, great place to come fishing. There we go. There's one. Get in the trolling motor. There we go. There's one. Get in the trolling motor. Come on. All right. There's a little fatty right there. Look at that little dude. All right. Well, we're starting to put a little something together. I'll tell you a couple little tricks I'm using today. Bayou Black, Cafalaya River Basin, South Louisiana in Cajun country today. See you, buddy. Uh, we talked about water color. And most of the water down here is fairly murky. But if you can ease your way around in some of these little canals and some of these drains and little back lakes and find water that's clearer than the rest, that's going to be one of your keys. So we are in an area where the water is actually mixing and I can show you a quick little look here at what it looks like, but we've got clear water back in that lake, muddy water back here in the canal behind me and where it's mixing is feeding ground for bass. The other thing, believe it or not, as wide and expanse an area as this is, it gets fished a lot and these fish see a bunch of different baits, but they don't see that very often. That's a little, Jean LaRue Tattletail Worm. It's a little eight inch worm. I've got it rigged Texas rig. They don't see that very often. 
Hi folks, this week's Lone Star Lakes is brought to you once again by the good folks at Fiberworks Marine Collision. When you want it done right and you want it done fast, Fiberworks Marine Collision. Now I want to talk to you this week about lakes that have secondary choices and by that I mean there are a lot of lakes that are known for certain species. For example, Texoma is known for stripers. Toledo Bend is known for bass. Well, Lake Whitney is one of those lakes that's known for stripers, but right now it has a great crappie bite. Now you'll want to be fishing deep. You're looking at about 30 feet at least, and you'll want to fish around the marinas. The reason? You're looking for the deep water docks. You need 30 feet of water under the docks and slips. All of the marinas are showing up with lots of crappie right now. Drop your minnows, drop your crappie rigs, drop your crappie jigs, and you'll find them at Lake Whitney. Now down at Lake Belton, the small mouse have moved on to their summer pattern. You might catch a few really early on some top waters, but for the most part, you're gonna have to fish a little deeper. Use your bigger spinner baits and let them drop down to around 15 feet before you start a slow roll, or use your hair jigs for those Belton smallmouth in the rocks. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by Fiberworks Marine Collision. When good enough, just isn't good enough. Be sure and check us out, Lone Star Lakes, on Facebook to see what we're doing and where we're going when we're not on the water. Hey folks, Captain Greg Verm here with this week's Fox Southwest Outdoors Report. Hey, I talked with Captain Bill Watkins over in Sabine. He said the southwest winds is causing the lake to be a bit dirty. However, there are good numbers of quality trout along the jetties. The beachfront is awesome when that water is green. Back in the marsh ponds, they're still catching redfish. Live shrimp and plastics are both working in those marsh ponds. Here in Freeport, we're having an outstanding red snapper season. Also, ling, wahoo, king, some mahi, and an occasional grouper have been on the hit list. Over in Matagorda, Captain Charlie Paradowski, he said the south winds are hurting him also, along with the low tides and being on the backside of that full moon, has fishing a bit slow for the way he fishes with artificials. Now the folks weight fishing with croakers are putting some solid boxes together, specks and reds. Captain Charlie also said they're waiting on that surf to clean up and hit the beachfront for those surf running specks. Hey, remember, if you want to fish Galveston or Freeport, inshore or offshore, and nighttime flounder gigging, we also have lodging at Bay's Landing, Call the number on your screen, check out our website. Hey, I'm Captain Greg Verm. I'll see you next time. You know, if you're gonna come here to South Louisiana and fish the Chafalaya River Basin, you're gonna get used to fishing around the reptiles. There, this is the most, I'm gonna invent a word, this is the most gatory place I have ever fished. I mean, they literally are swimming all over the place. Now that's just a little baby. But there's some big ones in here too, but you better get used to fishing around those if you're gonna fish here. Man, it's wildlife all over the place you're going to come fishing in the swamps of south louisiana man fox sports outdoors is brought to you by motor guides new wireless and easy to use xi3 xi batteries powering the world forward waypoint marine the gulf coast's leading saltwater boating specialist and strike king designed by the pros fished by you well look at what i did that's a big one for the marsh now. That's a big one for the Chafalaya Basin. There's one, got him. Look at this fish. This is a real fish here. That is real fish there. Don't jump, don't jump, don't jump, don't jump, don't jump. All I wanna do is show you to these people, look at what I did. That's a big one for the marsh now. That's a big one for the Chafalaya Basin. What a gorgeous fish, look at that specimen. Gold color, look at the just the colorations on that bass. Big old mouth. These are native fish here, by the way. The Louisiana Wildlife Department does a great job of uh, keeping all their fish stocked. But uh, these are the plain native bass. They're not the cross with the Florida species. You can tell by how long and Slender their bodies are, but he's real healthy, been eaten. What a great fish. 
All right, that's the one I've been looking for right there. That's a big one for this place now. I'm gonna let that fish swim back. See you, buddy. If you're coming to the Chafalaya River, have a good fish finder with a good GPS system in it. You can and you will get lost if you've never been here before, especially over here in Bayou Black and in the marsh. You've got to have a good GPS. I use the Lowrance Hook 2 system here on my Tracker Pro Team 195. And the other thing is you want to lay down a trail. I've laid down a trail everywhere I've been, so I know how to get back where I launched, which was back in Amelia. If you want more information about fishing in Louisiana, travel here, um, things to do, bring the kids, bring the family. We're not far from New Orleans and my favorite food on planet Earth. You can go to the website, I'm putting up on the screen right now, you can get lots more information and I think they'll even send you out some information there. So go to the website, all right. Hey friends, Captain Kevin Bruce here with your Fox Sport Louisiana Outdoor Report coming to you from Hackberry, Louisiana at Cajun Paradise Lodge and Charters. Guys, you had a good time? Great time. Yeah, time. Tell you what, as you can see, the fishing's great here, but right now we're gonna talk to you about the east side of the state. Tell you what, over Lake Pontchartrain, John Falkerman's doing real good around the trestles, live shrimp, Carolina rigging deep. Also, talk to Brett Ordiz. He's fishing down out of the Hope Dill, Bretton Sound area, running to the Long Rocks, catching a lot of speckled trout on live shrimp under a popping cork. He said, if you want redfish, all you gotta do is go up into marsh ponds and throw a gold spoon, and I'll tell you what, seems to be working. On the freshwater side, a little bit of action on Foss River, a little bit of action uh, up on Lake Bistano. Early in the morning, late in the evening, buzz baits and top water seem to be best there for you black bass. For Old Cajun Field, Captain Kevin Broussard saying happy fishing, may God bless, and we're gonna see you next week. There's one. Another one. You know, I mentioned little bass. Headed into this next quick commercial break, I just want to show you a quick little montage of a whole bunch of fish we've caught because we've caught lots and lots of fish, a lot of small ones, but constant action since we got here. We'll be back, Chafalaya River Basin in South Louisiana in just a minute. You can always watch our latest episode on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Catch up on past episodes by clicking the archive button and learn about fishing techniques and new gear at our how-to page. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for new fishing videos every day. Simply search for Fox Sports Outdoors and click the like button on Facebook and follow button on Twitter. And watch a new episode every week on any device by downloading the free Waypoint TV app on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Lowrance and the new Hook 2, the world's easiest fish finder. Welcome back, everyone. Let's get right to your Ask the Pro question for this week. Kevin wants to know, what should I use to chum or bait an area for catfish? For the answer, we ask catfishing expert Chad Ferguson. Chumming is a great way to draw in big numbers of smaller channel catfish and you'll catch a lot of fish when fishing areas that are chummed. One simple solution is to go to a feed store and get high protein cattle cubes. Just take a few handfuls of those, throw them in the water, and they'll usually draw the catfish in. An even better solution is to use a soured grain. I like to use wheat, but other smaller grains will work as well. Just throw some of it in a five gallon bucket Add some water, and then over the first few days, continue to add water as the grain absorbs it. In about a week or two, when you take the lid off, you'll notice that the smell just about knocks you over, and that means that it's ready. Get out on the water, just throw a few cups into a general area where you're gonna fish, and it'll draw the channel catfish really quickly if they're in the area. Thanks, Chad. If you want some help from one of the pros, simply go to foxsportsoutdoors.com and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit a question. Now it's time to find out who wins this week's Big Catch of the Week. Time right now for someone to get their big fish photo shown on television. Here's this week's winner in the Big Catch of the Week contest. He's Roland Foster of Terrell, Texas, showing an 11.26 pound largemouth bass 
He caught at Lake Bob Sandlin, Texas. If you'd like to have your big fish picture shown on television, go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com, click in the big catch of the week area on the right side of the homepage, and follow the instructions to send us your photo. Next up, here's some of the gear that you'll need if you want to come here, fish some of this marsh and some of this swamp, some of the largemouth bass you saw us catching on this week's show. It begins with my new all-time favorite lose reel. This is the Lose Team Hyper Mag. It is an incredible low-profile reel. It's built of titanium. It's got an externally adjustable centrifugal brake system that keeps backlashes to a bare minimum even with light baits like we were throwing today. It's got the speed keeper that allows you to hook your hook on without scratching your reel and leave your bait tied on. And it's got the speed dial which lets you see which size line you have spooled on at a glance. Now the baits we used were real critical and the bait that I found these bass bit best today was the 8 inch Jean LaRue Tattletail Worm. It was a June bug color and then kind of a purple and brown color as you see here. I had it Texas rigged with a little small 3 16 ounce worm head weight. Here are some other baits you'll need to bring if you come here from left to right a Strike King buzz bait to buzz across the top of some of that vegetation, a Strike King spinner bait and the key here is willow leaf blades to come through the grass better and then the Strike King pop and perch it's a frog type bait but it makes a popping gurgling type action again for fishing that vegetation. I can still vividly recall the day more than 50 years ago I was riding in the passenger seat of my Pawpaw's 1965 Chevrolet pickup. We were passing a steam generating plant. He looked over at that steam evaporating into the air and said, your life is like that. It passes by in a big hurry. He's exactly right. In fact, there's a Bible verse in the book of James that says your life is like a vapor. It's here for a little while and then vanishes away. That time has passed by in a flash. I'm now over 60 and I have kids in their 30s now. Here's the takeaway from all that. Live every day. Live in the moment. Enjoy the good stuff while you can and let go of all the bad stuff because we're only here for a little while. In closing, I'd like to thank a couple of guys who are very critical to helping us make this episode. Bill McCarty and George Shaheen are two local tournament anglers who fish the basin all the time, know it like the back of their hand, and put us on some of the great areas where we caught the fish today. We could not have done it without their help. Thanks guys, we really appreciate it. And you never know what you're gonna find. We found a great little restaurant here in Morgan City. You sure wouldn't know it by the outside, but it's the number one ranked restaurant on TripAdvisor. We had a great meal there. That's one of the reasons why we love traveling so much. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode from the Chafalaya River Basin in South Louisiana. Till next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.